Good morning. Welcome to All Saints on this second Sunday of Advent. We're glad you're here. If you're with us for the first time, they handed you a packet as you came in. You can take off the outer part. That is the announcement section. Inside is the service leaflet with all the words of the service and service music and the scripture insert. You will need hymnals for the hymns. And today we are using the 1982 hymnal, which should be in your hand. Um, during Advent, we are going to really hold spaces of silence, so at the beginning of the service and after the sermon, at the, at the breaking of the bread, and at the confession. So I invite you in those moments of silence to really lean into that, to still yourselves, not to rustle your leaflet looking for the next thing that's going to happen, but just breathe. This is a time of year when so many of us have such little time to breathe. So take advantage of those spaces of silence. Um, everyone is welcome to receive communion here. Instructions on how to do that are in the leaflet when we get to that part of the service. And now I'm going to dismiss the children to Sunday school. And Olive has the cross. So Olive, will you lead them out, please? Let's just take a deep breath in that moment of silence and know ourselves to be surrounded by the presence of God who is within us and all around us. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. A root shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, 
the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus so that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God in order that he might confirm the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, 
Therefore, I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. And again he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise him. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse shall come, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles. In him the Gentiles shall hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the voice, uh, this is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him, and all the region along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers! Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now, the ax is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. But one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. 
He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear the threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Gracious God, grant us always to seek the truth, come whence it may, cost what it will. Do you hear what I hear? Not that Christmas song. You know that song. Said the night wind to the shepherd boy, do you hear what I hear? That's not what I hear, and probably not what you hear. That's not what we are listening for, not yet. But do you hear what I hear? A voice, a voice crying at the Jordan, come away, turn away, prepare the way. Do you hear what I hear? It's the voice of one crying in the wilderness, calling us to come out into the wilderness. The wilderness is where it all begins. The wilderness is where we will find what we are seeking. Advent is meant to be a time of preparation, preparation in the wilderness. And that's kind of hard to imagine right now because the world is so full of preparation, but not this kind of preparation, not the kind that can only happen in the wilderness. The world is preparing for Christmas, and indeed in the world, Christmas is already here at such a volume and with such ubiquity that my friend Rabbi Amy said this week that she finds it impossible to go out into stores or restaurants right now. There is no room for Jews in a season that honors the birth of a Jewish boy. No room for Muslims or Hindus or Sikhs or anyone who does not easily slot into this peculiarly American onslaught of sound and light and shopping and celebrating that is ostensibly about baby Jesus, but actually is much more about Santa Claus. So remember our siblings of other faiths because this is wilderness time for them now until New Year's. And in here... It's not Christmas, not yet. It's a time of waiting. It is Advent, a season of wilderness. Now, for most of us, Advent is fading already and Christmas is creeping in. For many of us, this is not a season of wilderness, not a time of emptiness and solitude. The season is too busy, it's too fattening, too expensive, too stressful. The news alone will make your blood pressure rise with impeachment coming and multiple shootings in the last week at Pearl Harbor and Pensacola, at two Wisconsin high schools and in the French Quarter, with climate change warnings coming faster and faster as temperatures rise and the populations of animals and birds decline. Do you hear what I hear. It can be hard to hear this time of year. I think to really hear, to hear that voice crying, prepare, that we must find some wilderness in this stressful season. To go out like the people from Jerusalem and all Judea and the region along the Jordan did. They knew that if they were going to get to hear that voice, to hear the message of redemption that was coming toward them, coming for them, that they had to go to the wilderness, to the place where that voice can clearly be heard. Eremon. That's the Greek word used here, the word we translate as wilderness, Eremon. Do you hear it? It sounds like wind blowing, blowing around the eaves and gutters, blowing through the empty branches of trees. Eremon. 
It sounds like December here in mid-Michigan, cold and gray and gray and cold and night coming earlier and leaving later, day by day by day. Eremon. What do we do with that? We can flee or try to flee from the wilderness of Advent into the cacophony of Christmas. We can try to stuff this Advent season full of sound and food and stress, but what would it look like to step mindfully into the wilderness? What would it look like to embrace the Eremon? Wilderness as a place of emptiness. Wilderness as a place of danger and testing. Wilderness as a place of fasting and deprivation. Wilderness as a place of beauty, untouched and unmarred by human hands. Wilderness as a place away, away from all the noise and striving. Wilderness as a blank space, a blank page. Wilderness is a place so rich in meaning and associations for us who are people of the book, people of the Bible. In the scriptures, wilderness is the place of exodus and liberation, where God forms slaves into free people. In the wilderness, the people walk with God and rely upon God, led by God's pillar of cloud in the day and God's pillar of fire in the night. There, in the wilderness, they are married to God in the covenant at Sinai. You will be my people, and I will be your God. The Lord exalts in joy. There, in the wilderness, that covenant is tested as the people try and fail and try and fail again, disappointing the God who loves them over and over and over. There, in the wilderness, God sustains them anyway, despite all those disappointments with water from the rock and with manna from heaven. The Aramon, the wilderness, is the place where God and God's people forge their relationship forever in the Hebrew scriptures. So of course, as we move into this new time in the gospels, we have to go to the wilderness again to meet the baptizer the one who comes to announce our deliverance. If we want to hear that good news, if we really want to prepare, then we must go to the wilderness. And what would it look like to go there? What voice would we hear? What call might we answer? What love might we discover? Where will you find your wilderness, your Eremon, this Advent season. Some of you might not have to look too far for your wilderness. Wilderness may already have come to you this year because of illness and pain, or grief and loss, or isolation and loneliness. If this is the case for you, I say, be of good cheer, lift up your hearts, and open your ears. Listen. Listen, do you hear what I hear? It's a voice crying in the wilderness that hope is on its way. There is a light on its way that shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. Do you hear it? You who sit in a wilderness not of your own choosing, do you hear what I hear? For others, The wilderness of open time might stretch too far when you are older and retired and your adult children live far away and your grandchildren talk to you on FaceTime and then you end the call and everything around you is quiet and still. No more gifts to hide. No more Christmas secrets to keep. And all that hustle and bustle stilled for you this season. If this is the case for you, I say, be of good cheer. Lift up your hearts and open your arms. Embrace these open spaces, these open times as wilderness spaces where you can prepare your own way for the God who longs to come to you and walk with you and companion you in the empty wilderness of time and home and days that stretch and stretch. 
Hear the voice that calls to you, come closer, come closer. For others, the wilderness may be a tangled thicket of tests to take or tests to give, papers to write or papers to grade, of others who depend on you for care, your parents, your children, sometimes both at once, the parents and the children, of work that crunches hard right now because the year end is in sight and there is much to do before December 31st of competing demands of couplehood, your family, my family, your traditions, my traditions, travel to plan, travel to take, of getting everything ready for Christmas and ready or not, here it comes anyway. If this is the case for you, I say, be of good cheer, lift up your hearts and open your lungs, breathe. Inhale the wind of the Aramon, the wilderness, and the wide open spaces that can sustain you. Plant your feet solidly on the ground and take it in, the beauty of a life that is full, full. A life that needs you in all your glory. Because you do have work to do, and people to love and care for, and places to go, and a partner beside you. This life... This time of life can be overwhelming, yes, but it is also a time full of grace and gratitude. So breathe, breathe. The wind of wilderness will carry you through. There is so much more that God wants to give us this season than just another load of stress and busyness. But to receive that gift, the gift of the coming Messiah, we can't stay here. We have to go there, out there, where we can hear that voice, to the wilderness, the Aramon. Find your Aramon, this Advent, in whatever corner you can clear out for it. Find it, embrace it, breathe in it. The temptation will be to fill that wilderness full, too full to hear the voice that calls us to prepare the way. Life will demand that we fill it. Christmas will demand that we fill it. Even our phones will suggest that we fill it. Resist those demands. Instead, let's allow the wilderness to make its home in us this Advent. Let it be open empty, isolated, maybe even dangerous, but definitely beautiful. Let it be a place where you can hear, and I can hear, and all of us can hear that singular, compelling voice crying, prepare, prepare the way of the Lord. Amen. And now let us proclaim the ancient faith of the church using the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father,
Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks that out of the great silence, love is asking to be born in us. Hold us steadfast in hope and grant us strength and perseverance to midwife this sacred birth. As the more beautiful world Jesus pointed to gestates within each one of us, fill our hearts with wisdom to perceive this miracle so our minds may also believe. We pray, O oh God, hasten the awakening of your children of light and shepherd us to be wholly conscious, compassionate, and utterly in service to your purpose. Beloved Mary, guide us all to be mothers of creation, to be faithful and nurturing, to embody purity and gentleness, and to open our arms to all of life. Holy Spirit, Quicken the advent of peace and reconciliation among governments, territories, and nations, and unite the peoples of earth so we may proclaim a more holy human family. Stir the church and those of goodwill to welcome and embrace to sing the prophetic song of heavenly justice and to be living examples of God's promise. Hear, O oh God, our prayers for Nico, Sarah, Tamara, Catherine, Marty, Gus, Emily, Barbara, Matthew, Rebecca, Dixie Lee, Tom, and receive our prayers for those we love and for this precious world. We pray that all the dead may know eternal joy, especially the Reverend Senya Tepale, in whose loving memory the altar flowers are given by Joe Hartwell. Divine light, break through the illusions that bind us in darkness and summon us inward to prayer, stillness, and the soul tending we need to reveal the fullness of Christ. Hasten, O oh Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants who now live by faith, May we may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. 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 Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. And we are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please greet one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Thank you.
Morning. My name is. Boy, that was loud. <laughs> um, good morning. My name is Marguerite Helverson, and I'm a member of the All Saints Vestry, which is the governing body of our church. If you have any questions about All Saints, um, please feel free to ask me, and I'll do my best to answer them or to direct you to someone who can. <laughs> If you are visiting with us today, please fill out a visitor card. It's found in the rack on your pew. Um, place it in the offering plate as it goes by, and we'll send you some information on our church. This is the only offering we ask of our guests today, that you let us thank you for being here with us. Right after the service, Please join us for coffee and fellowship downstairs in the room directly beneath us. We call it the Undercroft. Just follow either set of stairs or take the elevator all the way down. There are a number of announcements in your bulletin today related to this week and some projects the church is doing. Now we normally only do four, but I'm gonna do a couple extras to make sure we're covered. We're having an outreach boot drive. Um, it's being hosted by, let me start this again. Outreach is hosting a boot drive for Edgewood Village Warm. Waterproof boots of all sizes, new or very gently used, um, can be donated. They can be left at the church here near the barrels um, or given directly to a net. And we'll be collecting these through December 15th, so you have next Sunday as well. The adult forum today is Coffee Talk with Jesus. What do we mean by God? Continue the conversation or join it for the first time from last month's Best Happy Hour Ever with Kevin Elliott. Um, and that is at 11.30. It will be beginning in the corner table of the Undercroft. There will be some brown bag concerts during Advent on December 12th and 19th from 12.15 to 12.45. If you'd like to bring your lunch and come join us here in the um, church, the music will be played during that time. Let's see. This Friday, there will be a Reflections of the Incarnation gathering. This Advent, treat yourself to a self-paced, silent evening at All Saints and come explore the Incarnation of Christ. You can come and go as you like, linger as long as you'd like, and the church will be candle-lit and filled with art, poetry, and various forms of wisdom expressing the wonder of this holy mystery. Both the church and chapel will be open from five to eight in the evening. And if you have any questions, call Carol Baker or Martha Lynch. Uh, a couple other things I wanna make sure we don't miss. Um, Annette Mileski, our diocesan candidate, is being ordained this Saturday, December 14th. Um, I think that's the 13th, no, 14th. And uh, the service begins at 11 a.m. at the Cathedral Church of St. Paul in Detroit. 
Um, everyone is welcome to attend. Speak to Annette during coffee hour if you would um, like to carpool. There's caroling on campus this week, or every week from now on, from, no, excuse me. Tomorrow, December 9th, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Come and go during the lunch hour. Contact Donna for more information. Um, next Sunday, there's a casting call for the Epiphany pageant. We don't have it hold a children's pageant on the Christmas Eve or Christmas service. It's held on Epiphany. So please talk to Becky Beauregard about auditioning. If you don't have a speaking role, you don't have to audition. But uh, thank you and thanks for your patience, but I felt that we needed to cover a number of things. Thank you. Now are there December birthdays? December birthdays, come on down. Who was born in December, like Jesus? <laughs> you were born, no. Boleyn. Boleyn? Anybody born on Christmas? Oh, Patty, excellent, 24th or 25th? 25th, excellent, you share a wonderful birthday. <laughs> Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on these your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon them this day, this year, and always. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. their wedding anniversaries yes come on down I bet you all had beautiful weddings wow were they all Christmas weddings or was there an Advent wedding in there somewhere you had an Advent wedding December's a nice month to get married Okay, come, oh, here, come, why don't you step in this slot here? Okay, because I'm going to go down the line and say how many years? 54. 54, and what day? The 18th. How many years? 55. 55, ooh. How many years? 38. 38, ooh. 44. 35. 21. Hey, congratulations. That is wonderful. Well, let us pray. O oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these your servants that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their homes may be havens of blessing and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and forever. Amen. Amen. Happy anniversary. And I just want to say about the boot drive, we're going to bless them next week. I want to wade through a pile of boots, so please get the boots in. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and a sacrifice to God.
We continue with the Eucharistic prayer printed in your leaflet. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, he may, without shame or fear, rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. O oh God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with Mary, the mother of God, Joseph, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. 
Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. gifts of God for the people of God.
Please join me as we send out our visitors to those who can't be with us. In the name of this congregation, I send you forth bearing these holy gifts to Dixie Lee, that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are money are one body, because we all share one bread and one cup. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as the members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.